I'm going to share today how to quit teaching by using a seasonal or summer or temporary position as a way to get a transitional job that can help you make the leap out of the classroom and toward something more career-like. I think what's intimidating about trying to quit teaching is the idea of figuring out what's a comparable professional job that you might be able to get right away. Um, and I do, I think it may be unrealistic to think that way because if you do that, teachers often think I'll become a principal or do something related to teaching based on teaching skills. But if you're unhappy as a teacher, I think like why do something that's related to teaching? Um, you may just end up with the same problems. So in my own life, the way that I transitioned out of teaching uh, was with just a temporary seasonal summer job as a park ranger. The reason that I'm making this video after a couple years after making my first video, which tells my whole story about struggling as a teacher, um, that video is you can quit teaching. Um, the reason I'm making another video is because almost every day I'm seeing two to three job alerts in my email inbox that are postings for summer jobs. These are summer jobs in the outdoors mostly because that's what I follow. Um, park ranger positions, temporary youth assistants, um, all kinds of things in the outdoor industry. They hire lots of people in the summer. And that hiring cycle is really, really kicking into gear right now. I guess you may be seeing this video any time of year, but right now it's January. The new year, 2019, just started. And this is when people are gearing up to hire people for summer. So regardless of what time of year you're seeing this, I just want to make the point. Something you can always do to start working towards a transitional job is thinking, could you get a summer job? Could you get a summer position? Um, you wouldn't even have to quit teaching to get a summer position. I think that's kind of interesting also. Um, you could get a summer job and do it for a few summers, see if you like it, whatever. Or like me, you could make the leap and make the commitment um, and just kind of decide to leave altogether. All right, I took some notes, so hopefully I'll be a little more on track. So if you're miserable teaching, my number one reason to make this video is to help you believe that you have options. I know it's easy to say that life is full of opportunity, there's endless options for you, but I remember when I was in the darkest days of struggling as a teacher that I truly felt I had no options. I was depressed. I had lost interest in just things I enjoyed doing, whether it was exercise or hanging out with friends. I look back and read those journal articles and I was just so confused, depressed, overwhelmed, uh, lacking confidence. I had no idea what I could do with my life. It really felt like stepping into a void of nothingness. I really felt like there weren't options. Now that I've been out of the classroom for about five years and I've had something like five or six jobs, depending on how you define what a job is. I, I feel like I'm only at the start of figuring out what my career is going to be. I moved from a park ranger to working in administration of outdoor issues and funding. I then got interested in marketing and decided that I would become a consultant and help nonprofits work on marketing, fundraising, and ultimately their websites and social media. I did that for a while. I saw a temporary position to come join a marketing team at a large nonprofit. So I started doing that part-time and quickly that became a full-time position. And now I've been doing digital marketing for a large nonprofit. So currently I have to ask myself, you know, where's my career going? Do I wanna to go to leadership and marketing? Do I wanna get some training so I can become more of a, you know, highly skilled technician. So I'm still figuring out what my career is going to be. But over time, I've managed to kind of go one step at a time. So I believe that regardless of your background, regardless of what subject you teach, you don't need to go back to school to get out of teaching. Um, 
you probably just need to figure out what your own skills are, what your own interests are. And having been in business for a while, even though it's nonprofit, I see that people's core skills, whether it's people skills, whether it's communication, whether it's selling or fundraising, whether it's more technical, which I find myself doing. I like to be kind of behind the scenes working on um, digital systems. You know, whatever your skills are, there's probably a core skill set that you have that could really support you in a new position. But people can't hire you just on that potential. That's where a transitional job could be very helpful. You're able to get your foot in the door with a new organization. Even if you're doing the lowest level seasonal job, there's not a lot of pressure to hire you to become, say, a summer camp counselor or a lifeguard or, you know, a retail, work in retail even. But in those positions, you can gain experience, you can build your credibility with those people, and that's where you have the opportunity to take the next step and get another opening with those organizations, which I think is key. Let me check my notes. So, while you are working a seasonal job, how do you transition from part-time or seasonal or something that doesn't make enough money to be sustainable? I'll talk more about that in a second, how to make finances work. How do you transition that to something that's more professional and maybe more comparable to teaching and to what your salary and kind of level of um, ability is? So transitional jobs give you a couple ways to do that. When I was a park ranger, the first thing it offered me was time to kind of mentally recover. I told you what a bad position I was in when I was teaching. I was just lost. Um, when I had that park ranger job, it was really easy. It was a lot of interaction with other people, whether it was coworkers or the public. It's a lot of time being outdoors. Um, and I just built my confidence. I just kind of got my personality back. I got my enjoyment of life back. Um, I started reading a lot more. I started swimming a lot more. That's actually when I first really got into swimming, which has been my main uh, fitness and hobby and everything for the last five years since then. So I think having an easy job really gives you mental space to just build yourself up as a person. That's number one. Number two, you can start using that job as a way to build a network towards a new position. So when I talk about networking, whatever I'm interested in, I usually read about it. I find people that are involved with it. And something that I've always made a habit of is emailing people or getting in contact with people who I'm interested in talking to about what they do. And I think this has been the number one way that I've found positions that were not posted, that were not generally, they're not on a job site. And it's because I've done the work of communicating with both old contacts and reaching out to new people through my work um, to find opportunities. And I know that when you say networking, it sounds very vague and I think intimidating. What I've always done is just been interested in the world been interested in what I'm interested in, um, whether that's for me, the outdoors, um, whatever it is, and just connecting with people, writing emails, connecting on LinkedIn, expressing your interest. And something that really helps you as a teacher is that you have lots of credibility as a teacher. And this is something that I think people don't realize. Being a teacher makes it much easier to get a non-teaching job. People respect teachers. People know that you're a good person. I mean, that may not be true. I certainly met some teachers who were, um, but the point is you've been background checked, you work with children, you're a member of the community. That standing makes it really easy when someone's looking through a stack of resumes to say this person is at least worth talking to. And the same thing can go in networking. If you're making a cold call, email, or contact, and you talk about your work in teaching and how you are 
looking at transitioning into something new, you can make a specific request to meet with that person for 15 minutes for coffee, to ask them about their career, to ask them about how they got where they are, what they're working on now, and if they have any ideas for opportunities for you to either volunteer, for you to contribute to an effort, for you to help out. That's the offer that I made that helped me get my first sort of career position after Park Ranger. I emailed the executive director of an organization, organization excuse me, that I worked with in college. I just reintroduced myself. I said I was very interested in getting re-involved in that work and asked if there was any way that I could be an asset to their organization. If there was any way, if they ever needed someone to um, give a testimonial, if they ever needed someone to talk about why they had a good experience, I'd be more than happy to do that. He introduced me to another person locally and they introduced me to someone and ultimately that third contact sent me a job posting and that's how I landed um, a salary job, a um, full-time permanent job that could have been my career. Uh, for me, I'm smiling. For me, it took me a few times. That first office job wasn't quite right on the money for what I was interested in. But while I was doing that work and extending my network more, learning lots about my new field, meeting lots of people, I also realized that I was interested in marketing and found myself leaning in that direction. Um, so that's something else I would say. When you get a transitional job, it may take a few steps before you really find what you want to do. If you have that mindset that that's okay, that you're just moving one step at a time and figuring out what you can do next, I think it takes the pressure off of looking for something perfect because there's probably not a perfect job, right? It's just a process of what makes sense now um, and where you might be interested in going next. It's just an ongoing process. So that's, that's basically my whole uh, spiel today. Some people have asked me in my first video, I just try to encourage people and say, you can quit teaching. Um, you deserve to be happy. If you're totally miserable as a teacher, I think you can be happy in another job. And the biggest thing to figure out is just how to start that journey. So this is my personal technique. This is what happened to me. I know there's tons of ways to get different jobs. And if you Google about former teachers, you'll find lots of cool stories of ways people got out of the classroom. But for me, I used a transitional summer job to open a new network, to get my foot in the door, and just to recover mentally and build the confidence to do a basic um, job hunt. There's so many resources for job hunters. Um, what color is your parachute? Is that the famous one? I think just as a teacher, you realize what you're doing is a job hunt. It's just, it can be intimidating to make that leap. And another thing about seasonal jobs, it puts some pressure on you. It gives you a comfortable place to be but it also puts that pressure to be always figuring out the next thing. Um, I think that's all that I have for you today. Um, if you're watching this video and made it this far, I just say, if you're in this classroom struggling, my thoughts are with you. Um, if you can figure out how to be happy teaching, then don't quit. But if you are miserable and have been working on it for a long time, then absolutely, you know, I don't see a reason not to. Financially, I think you can figure it out. If you save, you can have a buffer. And one other thing I wanna say about a summer job, and some of you might not have thought about this. When you quit teaching, if you make it to the end of the year, usually your paycheck is gonna keep going throughout the summer. So you could theoretically quit at the end of the year and still get paid for those summer months. Or some districts, they pay you a big check at the start of the summer. One way or the other, you have some buffer money built in. I quit mid-year, I quit in March, and I still had buffer money built in because you earn that summer money over the full year. So basically I had taught uh, three-fourths of the year, so I still had three-fourths of that summer money coming to me. 
my park ranger job didn't pay as much as teaching. It didn't really pay a ton less. You know, that's one good thing about teaching. We don't make a huge amount of money, so it's not um, too different from a lot of other jobs when you really think about it. But by the time my summer money had run out, I had, of course, been making money from my temporary job. But then I had transitioned and found my next thing by the time I would have gone back to school the next year. So I think that's all I have for you today. It's been fun to read your comments over the last two or three years. I don't know. Um, and I will think if you have any other specific questions, feel free to ask. I really enjoy answering the comments. And if you have ideas for other things you'd like to hear, feel free to let me know. And I wish you the best in 2019. Or if you're starting this, I guess it could be any time in the future. I wish you the best for figuring out what to do. Uh, get on LinkedIn. Make sure your profile looks good. Start your resume. Make sure your resume is updated. And start thinking about writing a resume that's specific to the kind of work that you might like to do. It might look different from a teaching resume. You might have to think back to other job experience you have, even if it was during college. Um, but everything that applies to someone doing a career search, that's something you can be doing now as a teacher. And I especially encourage you, when spring break comes, take advantage of some of that time to do really career development. Um, as teachers, we get a lot of time off that it's easy just to waste. If you really use that time, it can be critical for um, finding a new job. So, all right, cheers. We'll see you next time.